Hi. I just wanted to make sure this works. I'm going to go get my headset and make sure that works too because my sound is horrible. Okay. I'll be right back. Can you hear me? I am. Is it we sound are, clear? We, it does. I got us um, up and early <laughs> this time. So we're actually on. We're not, we don't have to start until seven, but I wanted to get us on Facebook so it didn't have any glitches. You mean people are looking at us right now live? Well, nobody's looking right now, but we are live. Oh, shoot. <laughs> Let me just pause that real quick. I made a little plate just to, and I'm just setting myself up outside um, on my little new patio that I made. Right, well, I was like, well, she's going to do a chat and she's talking about snacks and drinks. So Girl, me... I got my, I popped me some popcorn. Like, I actually have a popcorn business that I don't do anything with. So I'll pop some what? popcorn. <laughs> Popcorn is my favorite snack. Shut it up. So I don't know why you ain't sent me no popcorn yet. <laughs> now that I know, ma'am, I will send you some popcorn. So what we have tonight is truffle uh, Parmesan, well, vegan Parmesan truffle popcorn with um, thyme. So that's mm. what I I was like, let me make sure I don't have nothing sticking out my face, my nose. <laughs> I was like, you when you called me the other day, I was like, you want to have a video? And I thought we were just going out girl talk. And then he was like, oh, girl okay, talk. well, he, here's your, the manifest. And <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's still girl talk. We're just including everybody in on it. Cause we're I know, I know. I don't mind. I just hate being on camera. You, I get so I get so self-conscious. Oh, girl. Especially live, because then I can't, I can't edit it. <laughs> <laughs> right, oh, let me get that wrinkle off right there. Right. Let's see what mode I have this in. Well, we're just going to have fun. We're not going to be too serious. No, that's why I wanted to be. I just want to um, have it a uh, chill time. But I mean, we, we're going to touch on some stuff, but I just really want to chill. I don't want it to stress. I tried to get, get my, um, my living room decorated for you today. <laughs> I want to get some poinsettias so it can look a little faster. Oh, I was thinking about that. I was like, I have all these trees and they're in the house. I should bring one out. But I said, where I'm sitting, I don't have anything where I can actually put anything on display. 
Um, all right, Let's see if I can turn this so I don't trip. But I did put me some candles out here and some smell good. And Girl, yes. I have my cigar too. Girl, do what you got to do. We chill today. So everybody in the Facebook world, come on in. We're just relaxed tonight, so don't expect anything extra professional. We will get a touch on some issues, but we're just going to be back. You know where our and, black uh, Shelly, Shelly has been a supporter for our videos since we did the first one. Light? So, Shelly, Shelly. It's not enough light out there. Trying to get me some more light out here. I bought some meat and cheese for you. I got so excited too. So I was like, I'm gonna get me a little Christmas snack plate just cause we doing yeah, snacks. I'm gonna get a new plate. Cause I'm just a knickknack person, but representation matters. And so I was so excited. I found a plate with a black Santa on it. You're so cute. <laughs> Come on in the room. I see people are coming in. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. This is uh, the Empowerment Firm's um, first cheeky chat. So come on in, grab your wine or whatever you like to drink and your snacks. I tried to show you Santa without knocking my food over. <laughs> oh, that's oh, I'm covering the camera now. Oh, that's Can you so see him? Yeah, I love it. <laughs> I love I know. it. I got a dancing one in the house. Um, I got one on a rocker. I got some ornaments. So. Wow, it's so funny. I had this little setup. I don't know if you've seen it before you came in. And I have this little snowman that I've had for forever. Be oh, I love it. I have some ornaments that are made like that, the old school. Yeah, and I just, I don't know if his little light just went out, but he's been in my, well. Yeah, we have that. ones where they, they used to have lights and then like, I, th I don't think there's any way of replacing them, but I still keep them on display. Sometimes I put little tea lights behind them. Right. Oh, that's a good sure. idea. Yeah. I like that. I like that I'm, look, I'm a knickknack queen and <laughs> um, I get it from my daddy. But uh, my girlfriends and our girl group, um, we change our, the name of our, our group regularly, our little group chat. And uh, we're, we're called the knickknacks right now. It's, it's, so it's kind of fitting. And then I just keep, every since we changed to that name, I have been on a shopping frenzy online, but I can't go nowhere and do nothing. So I swear I have a package come in like every other day. I'm like, what did I order? Mm, like it's so bad. <laughs> I don't be knowing what's coming anymore. Like there might be stuff that should have came to me that didn't because I'm not keeping up with it. You could so rip true. me off right now during COVID. Exactly. I think I <laughs> Um, 
filter, mass filters that have not came. And I'm like, wait a minute. I know I ordered, I just don't know when I ordered. I need to get a figure out where I got to go back to, whether it was Amazon or something else. Well, it's PPE and you in Texas, so your governor probably stole it. <laughs> That's what my governor does. He steals PPE and gives it gives it away somewhere. <laughs> That's what happened. That's what happened. That's the story. I'm about to get think... COVID 2021. <laughs> Girl, I got my supply. So we have people in the room. We're going to get started. We'll, we'll give a few more minutes because before, like, I feel so bad because I'm that person that loves to be on time. And every single event that we've had, I was late because of technical issues. And I was like, I'm not this person. <laughs> that's not me. <laughs> so much. Can we add our, another acronym to our lateness? Right. <laughs> so I was like, nah, today I'm going to be here like an hour early. They just have to listen to music. <laughs> you saw when I logged on your Zoom, I was like, look, she's going to have to answer this. We got to make sure it works. <laughs> I have technical difficulties too, but that's just because I drop every piece of technology I own. Girl, I was like, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do better. It's going to be right this time. If y'all got to be here and listen to music, we're going to be listening to music, but it's going to be early. <laughs> we got some elevator tunes for you. Right, right. Girl, looking at poinsettias and stuff. <laughs> Mm, we'll do this. <laughs> what you drinking on? Some wine? Girl, I don't even know. It's so funny because I be thinking I'm grown and I um and I'm such a lightweight and I tell people when I start smiling at you hard and I usually be a half a cup of wine <laughs> just like smile and go to sleep. <laughs> so I'm gonna watch myself. So if I start like you like, okay, Shmila. <laughs> Is it going to turn into <laughs> Drunk History? That's my favorite show. I love watching Drunk History. <laughs> you don't be like this much. I'm like, mm -hmm. Shmila, you are not a drinker. Don't do it. <laughs> well, I'm half Korean, so I'm right there with you. As soon as that alcohol hit, I don't know what. I turn red, and then I can't function. And then I start crying. Why you start crying? <laughs> I don't know because I'm light-skinned and emotional. So I, I got coffee and I got some Red Bull just in case. That is hilarious. Plus, right. when I drink, I, I get too comfortable. So I don't want to, I mean, we're comfortable, but I don't want to get too comfortable. <laughs> yeah, I get it. I understand. So is that exactly 7 o'clock for me to stay on my prompt list? Like I said, I want okay. to So... Welcome everybody. As you see, we just in more so in like chill mode. Just so get your cup of wine or whatever you drink and come on in the room. If you have some questions, I do have my phone right by me so I can try to answer as many questions as possible. Um, again, Shelly, Shelly has been amazing. Like our first, like I said, our girls chat that we did, Shelly was on it. So I appreciate Shelly. She'd be sharing our information with other uh, veteran groups. So Shelly's on point. I love her. <laughs> so shout out to Shelly. So yeah, come on in. And as we said- Freedom sister. Right. <laughs> yeah. Sister, I don't know how to get up left up with my voice. So I'm gonna have to get up. I don't know how to do that yet. <laughs> So welcome, Electra. Um, welcome, David. Who else? Welcome, my sisters here. Welcome, Wanaki. Thank you, everybody, for coming in. Invite. If you guys are not a member or a part of the Empowerment Firm um, page, please share. Well, like it, follow it, and share it if you would. Because we're trying to get a lot of things done, especially this upcoming year. I am trying to get a calendar. Um, established and trying to get my website done. So if you can like it, 
you can follow and share the information. That would be great. Um, another thing, this platform, we try to be positive on here. We're also, uh, if you've heard any of our talks, we're trying to create uh, conversations to get practical stuff done. Like we want it tangible. We want we want action on what we speak about. So this is not an arguing platform. This is not a debating platform. If you're not coming with some just good positiveness and also some information that we can, you know, get the stuff that we want in action, come up with plans, be more productive. Um, I don't want to hear you, not trying to be mean, but I will block you, be blessed, be blocked. So with that being said, my beautiful sis here, <laughs> Joanna, um, I want you to introduce yourself. Well, I think I told everybody how I met Joanna and I actually posted something earlier if you've seen it. I was um, at Arizona State University. I was doing my master's degree and Joanna was, I put, well, you were, you were an advocate then as well. At, um, yeah, the, I was a military uh, advocate at, at ASU at the Pat Tunnel okay, Veterans so Center. I met her. That's awesome. Yeah, that's, that's right. So I met her there and um, we didn't get actually close and we knew we, we seen each other. She all, always seemed very supportive. Uh, I always seen her around helping people. She gave off a good vibe, but we never like clicked then because I guess we were just all so busy. I moved to Texas and then we ended up being like <laughs> sisters. So it's just funny how things work right. out. I want you to introduce yourself and tell us what you do. Um, well, my name is Joanna Sweat, and I'm a United States Marine Corps veteran. I served um, almost uh, nearly 10 years um, before medically discharging in 2007. Um, currently, um, I work um, for an IT company called Mancom. Um, I do procurement contracts for uh, federal IT contracts um, for a veteran-owned business. Um, and so that's my primary role. And then um, just really involved in a lot of different arenas as far as um, continuing my service, um, my passion, purpose, and desires. Um, and that is all wrapped around in a lot of volunteerism that I take part in. Um, I'm really proud to be part of different organizations, um, and there has just been a nominal um, paradigm shift that is upon us um, with all the chaos that 2020 has brought. Um, so really, I, there isn't a specific title uh, for me, um, other than um, I just I work really hard um, and that, that's just kind of, um, the core of who I am. And so anything I can do to keep me and. You went in and out just the last bit that she said, could you repeat that? Oh, I was just saying that, um, there's not like really a specific title to me or an identity other than me uh, being of service and anywhere I can kind of facilitate service and improve the world around me is, is where you'll find me. Most definitely. I can attest to that. <laughs> so mm -hmm. um, for those that don't, haven't heard you in an interview or haven't seen you, what made you join the Marines? Oh, man. So the military was not on my radar at all growing up and I'll just keep this really simple um but I became a teen mom I grew up as a military brat my father was a retiree of the air force um two-time Vietnam veteran um, I had a lot of respect for my father and so when I became a teenage parent um a lot of options and choices that I was looking at were just not feasible at the time and after um a little time some influence from a friend of mine who had joined the Marine Corps and meeting a Marine Corps recruiter. Um, it just all aligned and, and that's where I started my journey. Um, I was 19 years old. I had a one-year-old daughter, Ninja Raya, who is now 24. 
unbelievable. Um, and, and here I am today now. <laughs> wow. Goodness. Yeah. And I'll tell you like the idea of what I knew what I was getting into as far as the military, right. But my purview and experience was that of an air force brat. And now I'm going into the Marine Corps and yeah. I didn't tell anybody when I joined and I remember telling my daddy that I had joined the Marine Corps and the first thing he said is child I don't know what is wrong with you why you always have to go <laughs> the hard route they're crazy and he was like I don't think you're gonna make it he, he really was just really distraught about me having chosen the Marine Corps and he made me a bet uh he bet me a hundred dollars um, if I would graduate, he would give me a hundred. And so I was like, I'm gonna graduate. I mean, that's not even a question, but I'm also going to take your money. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. But I, I joined and I remember like they told me I was in calm. There was no specificity to my MOS. And so I was like communications. What is that? And I remember being kind of sold on like a, a journalism media path. Um, right. which I was an, you know, an English enthusiast, literature enthusiast. So I was excited. And then to find out I was a radio operator. So it was just a whole <laughs> lot of stuff. I had an experience for I, 10 years. Trust, I, trust and believe. I bet. <laughs> I bet. Mm -hmm. Like we can dive in as much as you want to dive in. This is, I mean, we're just chatting. What do you want to chat, chat about? Do you want to tell us a little bit more? Do you want to go on to the next question? Yeah. Oh, we can go to the next. I think a lot of people have heard me talk about joining and the service or, I mean, we, I think we all have similar stories, you know, yeah. Uncle Sam's misguided children. <laughs> it's so true though. <laughs> it's so true. It's like, you think you're doing one thing and you're like, I, I didn't, I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> yeah. Mm -mm. Yeah. That is not what you're doing. <laughs> But uh, the next question- That's where I learned life is definitely where you make it. It is very true. And that's another thing that um, I really want this group to be about because there's a lot of, um, I don't know if I want to say misrepresentation, but I feel like we don't get the raw truth and things. People don't want to speak the raw truth. It's always like very politically correct or very- um, I don't know, it's like a way of saying, a way of doing. Um, and it's like, just tell people the truth, tell them what they're getting into. Because even in that, people know how to navigate their situation. And that's just life in itself. Um, don't just I tell my niece and nephew or um, the kids around me, it's like, life is not just this, this thing that you're, is gonna go. Cause I had this idea like, okay, you, you, know, you, go, you go to high school, maybe go to college. I went to um, the army, then went to college. And then you, you know, meet somebody, get married, um, get a job, live happy ever after all, you know, just this, this thing in your head that you think is going to happen. And yeah. I don't feel like people have enough raw truth around them in love. Mm -hmm. raw truth in love. And then mentorship and education and training to assist. So that's a lot of what I want to bring to the table when it comes specifically um, towards uh, women in service or veteran women that are out or even the ones that are going in. So that's, that's, I, we've spoke about this before. That's the direction I'm going with the empowerment firm. We need to empower these women to the, be the best level they can be at. And then it, celebrate them being women. It's nothing wrong with being a woman and a soldier or airman or a marine. It's nothing wrong with that. Um, your, your femininity shouldn't be a, a problem. So no, that you don't have to compromise. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So that that's what this platform is all about. It's just about making strong, you know, women that that have that that become the best versions of themselves in every area. Like, what are the opportunities? What are the resources they need to become that? And that's what I want to provide. So going on. Um, we know that you yeah. are a veteran yeah. advocate. So what inspires you to work with veterans and be that veteran advocate? You know, um, with everything you just said, uh, it, there's a lot that we could unpack for, for hours in conversation. Um, okay. And it's funny because 
with each life experience I have had to go through and overcome, God has made it a point to then put me in a position to then pay it forward. Um, and I've answered that call. And I think it's important because um, I can recall growing up, you know, a culture of um, this idea of survival of the fittest, mm -hmm. um, competitive energy, which are all great things. Um, and then you join the Marine Corps out of all, you know, the different branches of services and the kind of um, indoctrination that I went through in becoming a Marine and being very proud of that. Um, but it, it, there is a lot wrapped in um, what I call cultish culture, right? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, you're, when you're in, you're drinking the Kool-Aid and, you know, you're thriving and surviving. And that's the name of the game. Um, the mission is the Marine Corps mission. Um, and I was able to um, sustain and thrive and survive and be very good at that and, until medically, um, I just couldn't do that anymore after deployment in Iraq. Um, mm -hmm. And then I told you kind of a little bit about how I joined the service was a little haphazard. I was a teen mom. Um, and there's a lot of stuff to, to, to go with that. It's like most recruiters would run from a single mother um, trying to join the Marine Corps. Um, but I had um, some specific attributes. You know, I had taken the ASVAB. I was an alpha female. I was an athlete and I was ready to ship, you know? <laughs> so that's like a recruiter's dream. And right. so then when I came back from Iraq, um, I knew, cause I had already been hit um, by the contact team prior to deployment was that I was gonna go be a recruiter um, after post-deployment. And so um, a lot of stuff happened on, on deployment. Um, I was in Iraq in 2003. Mm -hmm. um, and then um, my father passed away towards the end of that deployment. Um, I came home and then I went um, on PTAD. So I got to do some what's called recruiter's assistance while I was helping my mother uh, manage my father's affairs after he passed. And then I went to recruiter school. Um, and so when I was at recruiter school, um, it's, it's very, it, it was interesting curriculum back then. Um, I don't know if they're using that same curriculum or if it, if it has held up. Um, but the, one of the best things about the Marine Corps and its identity is that you're not joining the Marine Corps you are becoming a Marine. Um, right. And once you are a Marine, you are always a Marine. Um, and a lot of people don't understand um, how deep that really runs unless you are a Marine. Mm -hmm. um, and so when I became a recruiter, um, there are a lot of different strategies and tactics and um, ways that you pursue um, in to enlist. Um, and I made the commitment at the time, um, just because of who I am, but because of also the experiences that I had as a poolie with recruiters um, was not good. Right. I had a great experience though, as a P tatter after my father passed away and I got to stay home on 30 days of leave, working with a phenomenal um, integrity character-based recruiting station um, that was in my hometown. Um, well, not, I don't call it my hometown, but where I was recruited from here in Arizona because um, they had a turnover, you know, they had new recruiters. Um, and so for 30 some days, you know, I, before even going to recruiter school, I was um, heavily mentored, impacted, and influenced um, by three phenomenal uh, Marines. Um, and based on that experience, you know, it just demonstrated and proved to me that uh, you can maintain your character, integrity, um, and, and still make your mission um, right. without pulling the wool over somebody's eyes. And right. in addition to that, um, you know, most recruiters are males. Um, I was one of the only woman recruiter in 
my whole RS the whole time I was there, um, aside from an admin um, friend of mine who worked in admin, but she wasn't a recruiter. So she wasn't held, you know, she wasn't being berated in the ways that I was being berated on recruiting duty at the time. Um, but she was a great um, ally and friend when I, when I needed somebody because it's, it's, it's already polarizing being a woman in the Marine Corps. And then you go out to an RS and I'm out in the middle of nowhere in Colorado um, no Marine base anywhere, no Marine Corps kind of lifestyle or identity around me. And I'm the only woman, um, and the only woman of color. Um, and there was only, I think two of us that were black in the command. There were a few Hispanics. Um, but other than that, it was, it was a culture shock for me. You know, I came from, uh, working in comm battalions, my whole Marine Corps career or the wing, um, and in calm and, and support battalions, you know, it's very diverse. Mm -hmm. um, the people that I worked with were people that came from communities that I had come from, that I could relate with, that I felt, you know, a real affinity to as Marine Corps brothers and sisters. Um, and then you go out to recruiting duty and you're, you're kind of all alone and mm -hmm. it's male dominated. And, and I remember even like the first week them just fucking with me, like, profusely like just trying to push me to see what kind of woman marine I was going to be you know and then I just barked back you know and I just was like whatever you want to talk shit to me I'll talk shit back to you and then you know then we we create the the even level playing field um but there's so many weird things that happen out in recruiting I will say um, I do believe it is the toughest toughest job that anybody does that serves in any branch of service that has to go out there and recruit um, based on how they treat you, um, based how you have to manage and meet those missions and, and, and really losing your identity out there while trying to, to figure it out. And so for me getting sick in a non post Marine Corps command in recruiting um, and having to navigate my separation um, was also, you know, kind of scary. Um, luckily, my admin sister was there and she was very capable and she, she helped a lot and she relieved a lot of stress for me, but it just wasn't the same. And so leaving the core from that type of environment, um, I had a huge loss of identity, going back home, going back to being a civilian. Um, and so I, I struggled a, a lot. Um, mentally, health-wise, um, I wasn't sleeping at all um, due to some issues um, that I had come back from Iraq with that I, I just never dealt with and I didn't have time to deal with on recruiting duty. And you were up all the time anyway. So it was like, it was like a little band-aid of reprieve because your mind is focused on one thing 24 seven. So I didn't have time to deal with my demons. And then now I'm out of service, no resources. And I'm just thrown back home, like, like so fast. Um, and it was difficult. And through that difficult transition, um, I found my way to ASU on the cusp of them becoming really vested in the returning transitioning veteran military population, utilizing their GI Bill. Um, they had just inaugurated the Pat Tillman Veterans Center phase one. It's now like on phase five, it's beautiful. I love it down there. Um, and I'm really proud of the legacy that I started there and the legacy that continues to just be exponential um, with yeah. the staff that remains. Um, and that just really is a testament to um, the willpower of transitioning veterans um, when they reach success, um, how much, um, how, how willing they are to reach yeah. back and help their fellow brethren um, and really pull them forward. Um, and that's something that I think is very um, special to the veteran community. Um, and when, once you kind of work in that space, it's, it's really hard to get out. Um, and it's just ongoing because 
the more you learn, the more you know. Um, and it's it's not it's knowledge not meant to to be kept. It's knowledge that's meant to be shouted from the rooftops, to be shared, um, to help educate. Um, and so I'm just always working 24 seven and doing my part to make sure that, you know, I could reach one, teach one, somebody, something. That's awesome. Yeah, that's, that's, I wanted to touch on, first of all, I want to give a shout out to uh, Arizona State University, the Pat Tillman Center. Woo -woo. <laughs> and that Territorial uh, Cup. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, um, U of A. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Just want to give a shout out. Like I said, that's where I got my master's degree at, and that's why I met this lovely lady. Um, kind of piggybacking on what you said um, regarding like just how how hard recruitment is, um, but with the current state of affairs, what do you? How do you see recruiting efforts? being changed and what needs to be changed in them. That's not even on here. I just thought about something. Like I know, you know, um, it's funny because what, if you would have asked me that 10 years ago, I, for, I would have said that it's probably still very broken and there needs to be, you know, a lot of different things that happen. Um, I think that there's still um, a lot of complicated nuances um, out there on that duty. Um, but what I do know of this generation of Marines that I have been so blessed to still be embedded with through various online networks um, is that they're raising their voices. They're speaking out, they're being the leaders um, that a lot of the leaders before me failed um, to be. And they really are um, adding more to their identity than just a Marine. Um, and I follow quite a bit of recruiters online, like you would consider like Instagram celebrities. <laughs> and they're literally just Marine recruiters. Okay. But they stand like how to connect with that young population, they're vested. Um, and I think that that's probably improving and will improve. Um, it's like we've had to cultivate through COVID-19 and how we um, see each other. And when we see each other, um, how we share those moments. Um, I think everything's more valuable now as it relates to yeah. time. Um, and so I, I have seen um, in my world view of the people that I associate with is this coming together, this strength that, that's occurring um, with people's individuality right. and really sharing and shining their story, their testimony. And I've always been a storyteller and I believe that through storytelling is how we heal. Um, and so I, I do see that getting much better. And then just with all the stuff blowing up, like, you know, this whole, uh, it's funny to me because, you know, thank you for your service got born out of this whole idea of the forever war. And everybody's just been saying, thank you for your service. Thank you for your service. And nobody knew anything about really what was going on in the military or behind closed doors. You know, they just think we're just these gun toting Billy badasses heading out to war to defend democracy every goddamn chance we get. Um, and really there's, you know, a whole lot of underneath all that that's, that uh, is, is not the truth um, that we're told all the time. But it, I bring that up because um, just now, like with everything coming out and well, I don't know if you can hear me, it is, um, the connection is 
the wage this. Is that better now? Okay, yeah, there you go. Okay. I was saying is that um, now I feel like there's this enlightenment. Like now you just can't say thank you for your service because there's a lot of stuff going on in the news. So if you want to thank me for your for my service, can I please get you to write your congressman? Can I get you to write your senator? Can I get an inquiry? Yes, ma'am. Can I get some investment? Because yes. thanking me means absolutely nothing. Um, and I'm tired of having to have false uh, gracious gratitude. Um, so now when I hear that, I said, well, let me tell you something about my service and how you can be of service to, to take that thank you to another level. Or, you know, are you, are you a registered voter? You know, why are you thanking me for my service if you ain't even a registered voter? Um, so these are things that we're learning to kind of flip the script and not just, you know, sit and look pretty in our uniform. Um, and do the things that our country asks us to do and then stay mum about it. Um, and I think a lot of us um, fall into that because of the, our pride of service, right? We don't want to, um, I hate bad mouth in the Marine Corps anytime I have to. Um, but in order to improve the Marine Corps, I must talk about the things um, that are not right with the Marine Corps. And that doesn't invalidate my service. That doesn't invalidate the Marine service that came before me. Um, all we're doing is just making it much better playing ground. Yeah. Exactly. With that being said, because um, also going back to our very first chat um, in the Vanessa case, um, of course, we've had updates on this. We've had the inquiry. We've had, um, look at this. They had the independent um, review, and we've had, you know, some um, officers and some, some sergeants being either suspended or fired. Um, what are you thinking about that? Do you think this is going in the right direction, or do you think it's, I, I, I don't want to say, um, what am I trying to say, like an escape goat um, or trying just to get it out the way. Are you thinking it's going to be a change that is going to be kind of like a catalyst for actual change? Or is it something that since it's in the public eye at this moment, they're trying to mitigate as fast as possible? No, um, well, I guess that doesn't really answer all the questions. There's a lot of questions there, but I will say that um, <laughs> it is it is a good thing, right? That um, all these things are happening. It is to me. I do believe it is a cattle. Goodness, it went out again. I don't know if you hear me. And why are you that? Believe. Yeah, uh, I can. Can okay. you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah. I say it's a catalyst now because, um, like, all eyes are on this. Um, but I don't think that they're doing anything um, to, to placate us because they can't um, at this stage. I already think that they've moved entirely too slow you know, from the moment this young lady became missing um, right. to the moment that they even recovered her remains um, and how many days this young man was able to kind of do whatever he wanted to do before he took his, his own life and not have to answer to this. Right. Um, but my story is to say that I, ha I have more than one you know, story of being a victim of MST. Um, and so that, that story and the way that the media really kept it alive um, has really changed the game in general in organizing, right? Because I think when organizers work really hard and don't get to see results right away, 
Um, it can be defeating. Um, but organizers that have been working in this space all year since Vanessa became missing have not stopped, have pushed and pushed. I'm so proud of these women. Anything I've been able to do to support them, whether it's sharing my story or amplifying those messages through my mediums, I have done that. Um, and I have gone now and I've shared civilian mind I use um because it's not just a military woman problem you know that this is an issue that happens all across the board in a lot of different industries um and in our industry specifically um with um the culture of patriarchy and and kind of the macho mentality of of the military um it's it's really a big deal it's a big problem um and now we're having conversations um, and it's not just at the media level and it's not just like this, you know, I don't know what's going on at this higher level, you know, and I'm just reading news on it. Like I am seeing things changing on base, okay. on physical, uh, um, core bases that I'm associated with a person that are by their commands to to have working groups, to educate their Marines, to have more conversation about sexual violence, um, about what it means to be a disenfranchised or marginalized person in the military. And so there's a lot more, there's a lot more opportunity to really express who you are, where you are, and, and really um, integrate that into the military and, and understand that diversity and then use that diversity for good, not pit that diversity against each other. Like we, we talked about on the last um, segment that we did where, you know, the military culture as they were integrating women, this us versus them mentality. And a lot of that um, rhetoric has stuck around to this day. Um, I'm hoping it's left the boot camp scene where they kind of like telling new recruits that stay away from women, they're nasty, they're this. Um, but those are the cultural aspects right. of the military that once you start that seed, and if that person goes and hangs out with somebody who's like way off the Richter scale on poor behavior, then that's only right. going to make them a worse person. Exactly. Um, and I never believed okay. to be successful in the Marine Corps that I ever had to sacrifice my femininity. I never. But I had great representations as drill instructors. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. And that's, that's important because um, on both ends, whether it's uh, melt advocating or being allies for the women or women being able to stand up in that in that space where they're at because you see the converse of that and it's toxic on both levels especially when it's a woman like we had in a lot on um, the one conversation where um the other two ladies were in i think kosovo together and they had um some some senior leadership i don't want to speak for them that was not representing or supporting how she was supposed to um and that's that's very harmful as a woman not supporting and, and or backing up other women not just in, in general yes you got to be it depends on the situation you have to evaluate and take everything um situational everything at a time but when it's like you're totally um engrafted into this um, toxic masculinity culture and you're trying to fit in and you you basically are denying all the rights of these women just to fit in that's very toxic um but i wanted to touch on something else um let me check what i was writing down so going back to the statement that you made regarding when people say you know thank you for your service and um, what can they do? Because we do have the Vanessa, what is it? How do you pronounce her last name? I always get it. Ian. 
Ian. Um, the I am Vanessa Ian Todd for 2020. And um, could you speak on that and then speak to what you, because I know you've been active with this, speak to what you want people to do to, to reach out to like their senators or whatever. Could you speak on that a little bit? Um, can you hear me? Because you froze a little bit. Okay. Uh, yeah, so there are a lot of great organizations uh, that are um, pushing that movement. Um, and I've just been an amplifier. Um, I, I've really, um, my volunteerism in the last year was really focused on the Biden Trump turnover, um, as well as um, the McSally Kelly Senate race here in Arizona. Um, but I did stay engaged um, in that space. And um, we have, um, there's a, just amazing organizers. So I would encourage you um, to follow those um, organizing efforts, um, like military veterans. Um, I had to pull up some stuff on my um, thing, hold on here, and I'll give you the, the right links. Um, but it's really important because then you receive messages, right? And you're getting the, the information from the, the sources of folks who are working in that vein and are making a difference. And so generally you join their um, an action by signing a petition and then they have your information. And as a good organizers will then contact you directly and, and get your story and want to find out, you know, why you do want to be involved, um, you know, how, how you can help um, by, by getting a set of actions to do. And a lot of times, you know, they come out with an action to do for a month. It might be, you know, we want as many women to do a letter to the editor and you can write to your local newspapers and tell different stories or respond to different news that is happening and then use your veteran identity or voice, or if you're not a veteran, use whatever identity you associate yourself with that helps that cause. Um, other ways you can get involved is, you know, you can go and see what um, measures of legislation are being pushed and stressed, right? And then you can see who's already signed in support of those efforts. And if your congressmen um, or congresspeople in your um, states and your senators and they're, and they're not engaged, then it is your job to go engage them. Um, you can write them letters, you can send them emails, you can call them, you can go into their offices, but you can then, it's your job as a constituent to say, this is an issue. And this is your, you know, this is your area of expertise, you know, like some of your congressmen are on different committees, you know, down in Washington that are specific to military, you know, issues or different things. And so the, this, this is what we've learned in the last four years under this administration was how many people have been so disengaged from their local political scene all they know is like the presidential level. And that's, that's really not enough. It's because that's not important enough. The president um, works for our representatives that we sent up there. And if we're not talking to them, if we're not leading them, if we're not giving them the rhetoric and we're not even engaged with them, that's how these guys and gals get a little kooky. And then they start doing things that benefit themselves. Um, they start benefiting people who are, you know, existential to them and can add to their pockets. And that's not how politics was supposed to ever be. Um, so if anybody has learned anything in the last four years is get engaged if your kids are in school, you better be on a school board. You better go to them damn meetings because you have a voice. 
If they're about to build something in your neighborhood, you have an opportunity to go speak your, your mind on it and talk about if it brings value to your community. But people don't take these opportunities and then they stay at home and then they get on Facebook and then they share fake news and then they <laughs> get angry, you know, and, and then, you know, your head wants to explode because there are so many little things that you can do that will make a real difference. Just so, be alive, awake. <laughs> so um, I was gonna put this in your ear. Can we get together, I don't know when your schedule is, and put a list together of what you can do? And I'm gonna wanna even put together like maybe even a template letter to send to like our representatives or whatever. And um, for all of the guys that are listening who who will listen, um, I will put this on. I can send you the, the links that um, are going right now and that they can add. I just, I can't think off the top of my head right now. And I don't want to mess up anybody's organization. No, that's fine. So, but I want everybody to hear what Joanna said. We, this is what this is about. This is what this platform is. We want to do, get some practical change. We want to go out there and do something to make a difference. So what we're going to do is get those links. Um, I want to put together, I, I will put together a template letter that you can just take it, upload it, put your name in it and send it. So it can just be easy for you. So um, those are the next steps for us. Um, going on, um, I wanted to touch on um, the Freedom Sisters. Um, I have not got the opportunity to um, subscribe, but I will. I am. I want to make sure I'll do that tomorrow. But tell us a little bit about Freedom Sisters. Um, so I have um, been really blessed um, to be asked um, and given the opportunity to be a contributing writer um, to a new women's veterans magazine that is launching um, next month, January, 2021. Um, and it is, um, you know, due to the, the amazing hard work um, of Carrie um, and her support group uh, and team, she leveraged a, a podcast, um, I was a guest on that, it seems like forever ago, but really was just like, I think that, you know, the beginning of the year, but, you know, with COVID, it seems like so much time has passed. Um, but she's just really been grinding. And then in all the spaces um, that she's just found herself in has really been centered around the women's veteran experience, the empowerment behind that. Um, and I'm just, I, I'm, I'm just amazed because as veterans that, that uh, dream up things and, and work in the space of improving lives for other veterans, you know, um, us women and, and always feel, you know, Lori, you know, we're just kind of like a, a side piece to everything that is all available in the veteran space. Um, so this excites me a lot. Um, I think um, it's perfect timing um, based on a lot of things that have happened, um, based on a lot of cultivation of, of women veterans, just finding each other online, creating really value added um, support groups understanding um, the different dynamics of, of women veterans from all different eras, um, understanding our legacy. Uh, I, I've, been, I've been blessed as a, as a woman Marine um, to have this history of, of women Marines. Uh, Marine Corps is very history rich um, as part of our or enlistment is historical curriculum about the Marine Corps. Um, and so I've always um, kept the Women's Marines Association, you know, in my back pocket as, as that medium of support um, on, on that outside, or just to go look for a story, you know, about a, a fellow woman or to see news about women. But that's just one little siloed space. Um, 
And there are so many of us um, that span the globe internationally, and we have so many talents and we're leveraging so many amazing things. Um, we're chartering that the you know expansion of small business. Um, women are responsible for generating way more revenue um, in business and, and having longer, long-standing, um, sustainable businesses. And so, being able to really um, ride this wave. Um, with the era of technology in launching a digital magazine that really impacts all women veterans all across the globe um, and being able to, to open up an app and, and see somebody, you know, who looks like you, who, who understands your experiences. Um, and I think it's touching because it's not just about transition. Um, there's, you know, there's this 360 experience um, it starts from the moment of engagement. And so there are parts of the magazine that would appeal to the young woman who's even thinking about joining a service to really understand what those journeys look like, what women were able to accomplish through their trials, because there are going to be trials, and then what and how they were able to leverage and um, become something greater than themselves even after service. And so then you have the woman who's in service who can then utilize this as well to further empower her or to keep her, you know, um, motivated and to know that she's not alone wherever, wherever she is. And same with that transitioning, you know, I can open up military times and, you know, there might be two articles that really apply to me as a woman veteran, but now there's this whole entire publication dedicated to the lifestyle of, of military women, veterans, their families, uh, mothers, you know, just every experience that a woman could have that had served um, will be reflected uh, in this magazine. Um, and I'm, I'm so excited to be a part of it, um, a small piece. Um, I think, I believe we're over 30 some writers now. Um, yeah, every Thursday. And so I would, I encourage everybody. So I will tell you to follow Freedom Sisters Media on IG, Twitter, and Facebook um, for all the upcoming news. I encourage anybody who has a woman veteran or military woman or a young woman who's thinking about joining the military to purchase a subscription for them. It will be on sale um, when it does go live. So right now there's a link on my Instagram as well as my Twitter and on my Facebook. It's personal to me. Um, and so I would appreciate people um, who love and support me um, that would love and support me by utilizing my sign up link for the magazine. Um, when you sign up now, there, there's no cost. Um, you'll become a VIP member and you'll get all the breaking news weekly as we get ready to launch. Um, you'll be invited to a couple of um, live parties that we're going to have at those launch events. And you'll also get a, a, a nice discounted rate on the annual subscription where it will only cost you $19.99 uh, versus uh, the $29.99 that it will um, jump up to um, later in February. Um, so we really want an opportunity to, to get exposure, but, but this is a, a, a revenue, uh, you know, generating um, enterprise. You know, it's, it's not just for fun. <laughs> So th this is um, something that that is being leveraged um, to really take women veterans and and let us own our identity, experience, and testimony, um, and that excites me. That means that we get to cultivate what advertisement looks like for us. It means we get to determine, you know, how people utilize us um, in their marketing strategies. Um, and so for me, I think um, this means so much more than, than just a lifestyle magazine. It, is, it really is a, is a testimony to the power of when good people just start connecting and great things happen. 
And, and when it's needed, um, it's anointed. And when it's anointed, it will thrive. And, and I'm just, I'm really, I'm really excited and blessed. That's awesome. We did have a question about um, how will it be available. So Ulysses, um, I will get your link and put it on the page so they can get that information. So that, that, that link will be posted on the um, Empowerment Firm page. So everybody mm -hmm. that is here, if you have not subscribed, or like subscribes, if you have not liked or followed the Empowerment Firm, please do that and I will um, send out that link or post that link to my page. Um, so we're gonna wrap this up. Any closing remarks for the people, like what's coming up, anything else coming up in your life that you want people to follow, if they, you want them to follow you personally with your information, just, just lead us out. Yeah, um, really, I'm just um, I'm really thankful that you, you let me have some sister time because I needed it. It's it's been a minute, um, and uh, really, I just want to let everybody know that um, there there's a lot of things that we um, should be grateful for, mm -hmm. and I know times have been difficult and hard, um, but I I'm always available. Um, I know in the veteran community. Um, because I've worked as an empowered advocate, um, sometimes people forget to check up on me. Um, and I've been really um, blessed um, by joining a lot of different new communities in the era of COVID and that um, people have really taken the time to check up on me and make sure that I'm okay. Um, and I have to remember to do the favor too and not be you know, focused inward. And so I would just remind everybody, you know, to take the time, especially during this season, um, to do more than just put a heart or a check, you know, on somebody's social media post, but, you know, maybe say something that'll brighten your day or, or ask them about a life experience. Or if you notice that somebody's sharing something, you know, and it, and they're looking for actual, you know, engagement, engage with them. Um, the, the one thing that I've learned now is, is how valuable time is. Um, and any time I have with anybody is, is just, is great. And so I would just encourage everybody to make sure that your loved ones know that you love them, um, that you're taking good care of yourself, you're being healthy. And if you, you need anybody to talk to, um, we're all out here and they can follow me on IG. Um, I prefer, uh, which is J Sweezy Breezy um, and Twitter. Um, if I know you um, and you look sane, I might let you on my Facebook page, but sometimes people don't know how to act. So um, I just, you know, I'm, ha I'm happy and nice all the time. I don't like to, you know, but sometimes you got to. It said, be, be, be blocked and be blessed. Don't come with that. <laughs> <laughs> we can switch it up. <laughs> leave us alone. Leave us in our sweet zone. Just leave us there. We can. You know, be like that. But again, we are here to encourage each other. We are here to support each other. We are here to make tangible changes. We are here to gather and, and just have each other's back. So if you guys are having anything out here, um, any businesses or organizations that we can support that are um, geared toward women veterans, uh, service women, anything like that, let us know about it. And maybe we can even have a chat with you. So thank you so much, Joanna. It's been a pleasure always. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much. And um, you be safe out there. You still in Arizona? I think you're still in Arizona. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. I'm coming to see you soon though. Girl, come on. I got a room for you. <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> come on. But thank you again. Thank you, everybody, for joining in. We will have a lot more um, conversations. Also, the next thing that I'm trying to plan um, is to have a series dealing with women being deployed that are mothers and how we can support them. Because I don't know what that looks like. I know you do, Joanna, know what that looks like. And I don't know what that, 
I don't know how that feels. I don't even, can't even imagine how that feels. And in that position, what are the resources that you didn't have that would be valuable to you? So coming up, I'll be reaching out to you and pulling on you for everybody that is listening. Let me know, tell us about it, get engaged. Even like Joanna said, um, on the Empowerment Firm page, get engaged so I can know what you want, so I can try to bring and um, attract as many resources that will cater to your needs. And that's what I want to do. So it's time and we're about to get up out of here. So you have an amazing night and we will see you the next time. All right, bye. Bye.